Hello, welcome to part two of learning about the Canon 90D DSLR camera. So this is part two and I'm going to go into all of the settings in the camera in this video. So this, to get onto the menu, we press this menu button here and it flicks between the like the other settings on your live screen here and the menu button so on the menu button we've got the first page so all of these are different pages if we move this little um, this dial here if we press it this way we can move through the settings like this and then so the first page is all about the camera settings and that the six pages of the camera settings. The next page is about um, reviewing your images. And there's four pages of that. The next page is the Wi-Fi settings. And there's one page of that. The next page are like the tools. Um, we'll go through that as well. So there's five pages of those. And then there's the custom um settings and then there's your favorite settings so we'll go back to the first page you can also flick through them by touch if you've got a, your touch screen enabled you can flick through them like this as well and then you can if we just go back if you want to keep going back to the menu just press menu again so the first setting if we press set it takes you to the full setting page and in the full setting page you've got the image quality now I have on occasions um, forgot what to check I was in the right setting when I was out taking photographs and I had it set for JPEG only I didn't have it set for the raw settings so when I come to edit the images um, I only had the JPEGs to work with and that which I was really upset about because the raw images do keep more detail if you do take raw images that are a lot bigger the file sizes they do take a lot more space up on your SD card and on your computer but if you want to say edit them so they look professional in say Photoshop or Lightroom or some other editing software you can edit it there's also a raw processing you can do inside the camera as well if you don't have Lightroom or Photoshop so most professional photographers shoot in raw and uh, sometimes they also shoot in JPEG um, sometimes the JPEGs are good enough quality to use for your purposes um, but most people prefer to edit their own images in Photoshop or Lightroom just so they can be a bit more creative with the settings so to set your your image in either RAW or JPEG if you can if you move this you can see if I move this icon you can see it's changing up here move the um, dial I should say so if I move the dial just keep moving the dial you can see the little red thing moving along so I've got it on RAW and I've got it on a JPEG so the JPEG I've got is a second quality which is so the raw is 6960 pixels times 4640 pixels. If I have it on this one. And it tells you how many. This is the highest setting for the JPEG images. This one here. And it tells you here how many images you can get on your SD card with that setting. So... There's only 631 I could actually put on the JPEG with that setting. If you click the minus button, that means you're taking away the raw settings and you've only got the JPEG. So if you're only using JPEG, you could have 2,644 images on the card. 
So if you were say out taking photographs and you only had the one SD card with you and you're seeing you only had a few images uh, left you can take then it might be worth you just swapping to the JPEG because you get more space with the JPEG. So the JPEG settings we've got that one and this one they're the same size image but I think the first one is a bit better quality than the second one and then you've got the medium which is 4800 pixels times 2688 pixels and then you've got the small which is 3472 pixels times 1952 pixels so there might be a time that you only want to have like very small images for example if you were just going to use them for Instagram where you only need small image sizes anyway you might prefer to choose that and then you've got higher number of images you can get on your SD card so if you were using a small setting you could get like 9999 images on your SD card so the way I work is I always have it on RAW and I always have it on the, the best setting on the JPEG image. Um, it takes up a lot more file space but once I've finished with the photographs I then just delete them off the computer and I reformat my SD card. But sometimes it does take a lot of space up on your computer if you forget to delete them. And then the, oh, you might think to yourself, well, I'll just leave them on the computer because I might need them in the future. And then um, you never use them. And then it just takes up space on your hard drive. So it's up to you how you do it. Some photographers prefer only to shoot in JPEG because they haven't got the time to actually go through and edit all the images in Photoshop or Lightroom because that does take time as well so it depends what you want to do when you're happy with your settings you just you can either press ok on there or press set on there and then just check that it has got raw and the um the jpeg on the bar there now there's still image aspect ratio there's lots of different settings most people have it set to 3.2 you can have it set to 4.3 or you can have it set to 16.9 so you can choose whichever one you want i think i'll leave it on there you can also have it a square image as well like one to one i'm going to leave it on 3.2 the image review this is after you've taken the image how long it stays on your camera for before it disappears you can always get it back with the play button um, to have a look at but uh, once you've taken an image you just might want to have a quick look just to see that it looks in frame and it's the horizons level before you you take the next shot um, rather than clicking the play button to recheck it depends on how much time you've got and how many, how fast you want to take images whether you have that review to uh, change that you can click in here I'm just leaving mine on two seconds but a lot of people don't bother with it release shutter without card now I would always recommend you have that off because uh, why would you want to take a picture without a SD card in there doesn't make any sense to me um, so uh, you should have it set to off because if you have that set to on so if you go in here and if you enable it which I'm not going to do then when you, if you forget to put your SD card in there and you start taking images you think the SD cards in there and then you get home and you find you haven't taken one image because there wasn't an SD card in there so I, I always have that set off the lens aberration control is a bit complicated um, you can have it set to on you can have the peripheral uh, digital lens optimizer you can have all of them set if you want but I just have it set off I do need to do more research about this setting in particular because I haven't really 
I don't really understand the settings on there. So we'll just leave that on off for now. Go back to menu. Now the flash control. You can change all your settings in here for the flash control. Um, you can have it. So you've got slow sync. You've got red eye reduction. I've just got that disabled at the moment because I'm not taking any portraits of anybody. You can have the evaluative meter. Um, the flash firing, I've got it set to fire. If you've got that to off, it won't fire when you need it to fire. The built-in flash settings, you can have a look at that. Wireless function. You can enable that or disable that. I tend to use a trigger on here and my trigger works and I don't change that setting. Shut the sink first curtain, you can have that set to second curtain if you want. So that's quite complicated settings for flat for the flash and if you don't understand how to use the camera yet you probably won't want to change those. External, this menu cannot be displayed, incompatible flash or flashes power is turned off. I haven't got a flash on at the moment so that's why that's not showing. And then you can set up functions if you've got a flash on here. So that's the flash control. And then you've got exposure compensation. So the AEB, so that's the automatic exposure bracketing setting. So you can turn it here to set the exposure, like the add or the minus buttons here. So if you wanted it like one setting above the zero, so a, a bit brighter. And if you wanted to set the range, you would turn the speed dial to set the range like that. And then you would press set. So it was going to take one image here, the first image. It's going to be a bit brighter than the zero. The second image is going to take three, it's three stops higher than the zero. And the third image is going to take between one and two stops lower than the zero. So that's how you set the AEB setting. The ISO, you can change the ISO settings here. It's best to have it on 100, like I said in the last video, um, so you get less noise. But if there's lower light, you will need to increase the ISO. You can change the range, so that is the full range, 100 to 25,600. The automatic, if you've got it on automatic, you can change the range as well on there for the automatic range because uh, sometimes it will compensate and give you like a much higher ISO reading. So you can change the ISO on there if you want to. And then the minimum shutter speed for using the ISO, you can change that as well. So if you wanted to say have it on like once, like I've got it on a quarter of a second, but you can choose one of the other settings for the minimum shutter speed with the ISO on the highest ranges. The automatic light optimizer. So it's disabled in manual and bulb mode. And I've got mine in manual mode at the moment. Um, if I change the mode, so if I change it to AV mode, we'll go in here. You can have it on high if you want, low, standard, or high. But I've just got it on off because I know I normally work in manual mode anyway. Just um, some notes on the um, PDF uh, instructions. With the auto correction, it says um, noise may increase and clarity may change under some shooting conditions. 
If the effect of auto lighting optimizer is too strong and results are not at your preferred brightness, set to low or disable. If a setting other than disable is set and you use exposure compensation or flash exposure compensation to darken the exposure, the image may still come out bright. If you want a darker exposure, set this function to disable. So the um, highlight tone priority mode, you can have it disabled or enabled or enhanced. If you select it, it improves graduation in highlights. The graduation between the greys and highlights becomes smoother. Enhanced reduces overexposed highlights even more than enabled under some shooting conditions. The white balance, I always leave it on automatic. Um, you can change it after post as well, like um, in software like Photoshop or Lightroom. You can change the white balance in there if you want to, after the, if you're using a raw file. <clears throat> if you want to change the white balance, you can, like if you were using the flash, say you could change it to flash. Um, just so the JPEGs are not affected as, as much because it's the JPEGs really that's going to be affected by these settings. Um, but if you were just using RAW, you don't really need to worry about that. So I'm just going to go back and change that to automatic white balance. And then you've got custom white balance and you can set your white balance on one of the images that you've taken. That's a bit complicated, I'm not going to go into that now. Just leave it for the moment and you can shift the bracket of the white balance. Your colour space you can have it on SRGB or Adobe RGB. Um, if you were selling your images to a magazine or something like that, they might be specific on which colour space you use. And the picture style I've got set in neutral. You can change it. This is mainly for your JPEGs. Um, you can change it if you wanted it on automatic. You could have it on automatic and it just means that your JPEGs have an automatic picture style depending on where you're taking your images. So the next, the next page, um, the long exposure noise reduction I've got set to off because uh, if you were say taking an image for a, l a long time, for example over say 20 seconds, it would reduce the noise in the image but sometimes when you get noise reduced in the image it also uh, makes the image less sharp. It's up to you whether you use that setting or not, I generally have it to off and then in the software you can't there is a noise reduction in photoshop or in lightroom where you can um, try to get rid of the noise hi iso speed i've just got it set as standard options are limited with raw or raw and jpeg image quality does delete data obtain data for removing dust um, I don't need to do that at the moment. Live view shoot enable. So, for example, if you want to use this screen to shoot with, um, it's, you need to have that enabled. Or you can disable it. Multiple exposure. I've got it disabled. Um, there might be times why you, where you want to have uh, multiple exposure, where you, it takes like three exposures and then combines them. So it'll take an image uh, of more higher exposure, lower exposure, and one in the middle, and then it'll combine them. Um, so you can change that. Um, you can even change the number of exposures you want it to do as well. And you can have it set to one shot only or continuously. Um, but I've disabled that for the minute because if I've got it enabled, a lot of the other settings won't show up. And I want to show you the other settings as well. HDR mode I've also got disabled. This is mainly for like JPEGs. Um, you know, so you can alternate that as well. And uh, just to give you a... Uh, 
a JPEG with an HDR effect. You can have um, Art Vivid, a continuous HDR auto image align. So that's page four. Page five, we've got the interval timer. So you can, I've just got that disabled at the moment. You've got anti flicker shoot, you can enable that. Um, if unable to set the shutter release, time lag may become longer or continuous shooting speed may become slower. So I haven't got that enabled, I'll disable it, because um, it does make shooting, you have to wait for the flicker to stop before you can shoot. Um, if there was a lot of flicker and say if you were at like a concert and there's a lot of lights flashing about, or you're in a kitchen and there's like a fluorescent light flickering or whatever, you can enable that and it only takes a shot when the flicker is not happening so it's, it might be good to have and then if you want to lock your mirror up for any reason you can do that as well lens electronic mf i don't bother with that and the af assisted beam firing so if you wanted to say take a flash and you wanted the camera to shoot out uh, a light to get the light right before it takes a flash, you can have that set. Some people don't bother with it. Let's go back to the next page. So we've done all the six pages of the actual settings for your images. So the next page is the playback so you can protect your images on here you can select it which images you want to protect so that you don't delete them by accident you can rotate oops let's go back to the you can't rotate the image so you can change the rotation of it in here You can erase your images, you can print the order of the images, you can set up a photo book and you've got creative filters as well. <clears throat> so you can add creative filters to your images after you've taken the photograph. So if I click on this one, I can make it greeny, black and white, like that just go back I can make it soft focus I can give it a fisheye effect so it looks like that and you can change the strength of it as well by using this, these little bars. And there's art bold effect, there's water painting effect. So it makes it look like a water paint like a watercolour and you can change the intensity of that as well. And there's a toy camera effect. You can change the tones. And there's the miniature effect. So there's lots of different little filters there um, you can use after you've used your images but I tend not to use those. <clears throat> so the second page on the playback you can do the raw image processing so you can select an image. Um, so we select that one and then we'll just click set. OK and then use shot settings customize raw processing so 
you can change the exposure you can go increase the exposure like that and then you can change the white balance in camera as well and you can go to automatic or you can go to daylight shade Tuscan light I think it was a Tuscan light when I took this image you can change the colour space to Adobe RGB if you want to and you can I've saved it by doing that and you can reset it if you make a mistake you can also have noise reduction as well so if you click on there you've got low noise reduction standard and you've got high leave it on standard probably doesn't need any noise reduction but it might so you can you know you can do some raw processing it's not good as good as like photoshop or lightroom but if you're stuck and you don't have photoshop or lightroom you can use that Create a sys. Oh, I'll go back to that again. Oh, let's go back to this. Create a assist. So if we click on that, and then we'll go set. To be honest, I've not really used these settings in here, so it's a bit foreign to me. Um, let's just go back again so you can change the brightness it's a bit like when you use your phone when you do an image on your phone change the exposure the contrast I mean and saturation levels you can increase it and the temperature make it warmer or cooler go cooler and then uh, you can change the colours. I'll go back to menu again. Menu. And then you've got quick control raw processing as well. <coughs> red eye correction if there's any red eyes in your images and you can create an album. So this is like cropping. Now the cropping, it only works with JPEGs. It doesn't work with raw files. Um, so you can click on the crop and the, where it's got that magnifier, you can move it around or you can sort of pinch it like that. So if I wanted to say crop it just so the heads of the flowers were there. I could just click set and now it's um I've just got the heads of the flowers in the image now. So you can also change the size of it so you can make it a square image if you wanted to so let's just go back to square image like that resize you can resize your image as well rate and give it a, a rating so you can rate your images with that you can go make it oh You can create a slideshow and you can search, set image search conditions and then you can set. Jump images by specific number, 
display date, display folder, stills. So you can choose how you would want to um, scroll through your images as well. And then you've got playback information, display. So if you were playing back your image and you wanted to have a look at the settings on it. So with this I've got the 22 out of 23 images here. The battery, the Wi-Fi is off, Bluetooth's off. It's RAW and JPEGs. I saw 500 when I took this. It was 2.8 aperture, 1/40th of a second. So the information, you've got the histogram and the other information and or, or just have the image. So the playback information you can set to only show certain parts. So for example it's shown that, it's shown, you can have it shown that as well. You can have it shown that, 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 and that. So I've got them all ticked, I'm just going to say OK. Highlight alert enabled, you can disable that if you want to. Um, what the highlight alert is, is if you were taking an image and there was part of it that was um, like white, like white sky or um, like a white dress and sometimes you can lose detail if it's too much white or too little information and it'll highlight that on your camera and it'll flash to tell you that sky's all white or the dress is all white just so you're aware in case you need to drop down your exposure a bit or put on a polarizer on the lens or something to change it so i've got mine enabled you can disable it if you don't like a flash to tell you about the highlight. The AF point, you can ha either have that disabled or enabled. I've got it enabled. I've got the play black grid 6x4, but you can change it to 3x3 three three or 3x with the diagonal as well, or just 3x3. Three three. I've got it 6x4. It helps me when I'm taking pictures of buildings to see the um, horizontal and vertical axes of the buildings. So I try to get them straight. And view from last scene. So the last image you were looking at, that will be the first image. The last image you took will be the first image you see. Or you can change, you can disable that. So the Wi-Fi settings, 